atoms. The world is powered by radiation. And the world includes you and me. In other words, we too are made of atoms and we are powered by radiation. Like some kinds of atoms, some kinds of radiation can be harmful to living things. Like most atoms, most radiation is not only helpful, it is absolutely essential to life on this earth. Like light, for instance, visible light. Light rays have been streaming into earth from our brother sun for over five billion years. Those light rays from our sun have been the power behind all life on earth throughout these billions of years and are the power behind all life on earth today. Like other kinds of radiation, light is itself weightless and invisible. Like other kinds of radiation, light travels at 186,000 miles per second. The sun is over 93 million miles away from earth, so it takes about eight minutes for light rays to get from the sun to us. Like other kinds of radiation, light even though invisible in itself, can be detected by its effects on other things. Things like green leaves, blue sky, photographic paper, our eyes, to mention just a few. And finally, like other kinds of radiation, light can hurt as well as help. Anyone who has ever been sunburned can attest to one kind of hurt and anyone who has ever eaten food can attest to a major kind of help. Let's get more scientific now. Just what is this light that we all know intuitively, but few know scientifically? Visible light, scientists tell us, is a form of energy. It is energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. What is an electromagnetic wave? It's not easy to describe. But, well, imagine a wave in a pond or in the ocean. Notice how the wave changes, moves up and down, forward and back, in and out, in a regular cycle. Now, keep the movement and take away the water. Electromagnetic waves are like that. A mysterious field of electromagnetic energy that moves in regular cycles. Well, electromagnetic waves may be hard to describe in words or even in pictures, but they can be accurately measured in numbers. Two important measures are wavelength and frequency. That is, how long are the waves and how frequently do they move back and forth, up and down, out and in. In the case of light, these wavelengths are so small they are measured in micrometers that is, millionths of a meter, about the diameter of a bacterium. Another way to visualize this small size, it would take between 33,000 and 66,000 visible light waves to make up one inch. The frequency of visible light waves is as fast as the wavelengths are short. It was on the order of 10 to the 10th power cycles per second. Visible light makes up the center of the electromagnetic spectrum. Moving to the left, we come to waves with longer wavelengths, and they're called infrared waves. Infrared waves are invisible to the eye, but you can feel them as heat when they strike your skin. We get infrared radiation from the sun to warm us here on Earth. We also get infrared radiation from fires, from radiators in our homes from light bulbs, and from just about any other hot object. As a matter of fact, we also give out infrared radiation ourselves, generated by our own bodily heat. The next longer wavelengths are in the microwave region. They're useful to us in many ways. Microwaves are used to cook our food, to open garage doors, to communicate via cell phones, to guide airplanes and missiles, and to trap speeders with radar. Now we move on to still longer wavelengths and lower frequencies and we enter the band of broadcasting. Television, radio, shortwave radio, FM and AM radio, and finally, the electromagnetic waves from electric power lines. These last and longest waves have lengths measured in thousands of miles and frequencies as low as 60 cycles per second. 
Well, it can give you an eerie feeling to think of all the thousands of electromagnetic waves that hit and pass through your body every second of every day. Now, this radiation comes from all directions, and you are powerless to escape it. It comes from your local and faraway radio and TV stations. It comes from your local power lines, telephone lines, international satellites orbiting the Earth, and from the personal computers next door. It comes from the 93 million mile away sun, the 10 million light year away star, and from the candle in your romantically lighted dining room. It may give you an eerie feeling to have so many electromagnetic waves invading your body, but as far as we know today, you don't have much to worry about health-wise. Looking directly at the sun or at any other intensely bright light can harm the retina of your eyes. Visible light, infrared light, and microwaves can be intense enough to overheat and to burn living tissue. But these effects are fairly easily avoided by common sense, fail-safe doors on microwave ovens and so forth. Now some very recent studies do show possible harm from long exposure to high voltage power lines, though the evidence is not very conclusive. As we move in the opposite direction on our electromagnetic spectrum, the dangers do increase. Electromagnetic waves with wavelengths just shorter and frequencies just higher than visible light are called ultraviolet light. These are the kind of rays that give black light displays. While your eyes cannot respond directly to ultraviolet waves, certain minerals can, and they will glow. That is, they change the ultraviolet radiation into visible light radiation that your eyes can see. The sun sends out a strong dose of ultraviolet radiation to us here on Earth every day. Fortunately, there is a zone of ozone gas that surrounds the Earth and filters out much of this potentially harmful ultraviolet light. But not all of it. The part that gets through the ozone is responsible for sunburn and for much of the skin cancer that plagues humans, especially people who spend a lot of time in the bright sun, either from choice or from necessity. Scientists today are worried that this ozone shield is being slowly destroyed by some modern industrial chemicals. If the ozone should decrease significantly, it would mean an increase, maybe a catastrophic increase, in human skin cancers. It could also result in other harmful effects in the living world. As we keep moving in this direction, towards still shorter wavelengths and higher frequencies, we run into still more powerful waves of radiation that are called ionizing radiation. Now an ion is an atom that has lost or gained electrons. An ion thus has an electrical charge and is much more chemically reactive than a neutral atom. Ionizing radiation then is radiation that can penetrate deep into cells and can knock electrons out of atoms in the cell. If cell atoms are ionized, unpredictable things can happen in the cell. If too many atoms are ionized, the cell's metabolism may get so out of whack that the cell dies. Or worse, it may be that the ionized atoms are a part of the controlling DNA molecule in the cell's nucleus. Since it is the DNA that controls the cell's activity, especially in reproducing, this may result in uncontrolled cell reproduction, in other words, in cancer. The first band of ionizing electromagnetic waves beyond ultraviolet is the zone of X-rays. X-rays can penetrate skin and flesh to give a picture of bones, or to show up cavities in the teeth. Over 90% of the total human-made ionizing radiation that most people will ever receive in their lifetime will come from medical and dental x-rays. Now, in most cases, the benefits far outweigh the risks. However, there are some risks. Your own doctor or dentist is your best source for help in avoiding these risks. 
Beyond X-rays, physicists have discovered another range of ionizing radiation with even shorter wavelengths and higher frequencies. These are called gamma rays. Gamma rays are emitted by radioactive elements on Earth. We can control gamma rays in special industrial applications in order to see where no one has ever seen before, through thick metal plates, for instance. And this gives you a new way to check on the safety of bridges, of tankers, and other heavy metal machines and structures. And at the opposite end of the material spectrum, gamma rays are useful in medicine. They can be focused, for instance, to deliberately kill fast multiplying cancer cells deep within the body without harming normal cells. Besides this spectrum of electromagnetic waves, there is still another kind of energy radiation that is important today, and this is the radiation that comes from radioactive elements, natural and human-made, as well as from nuclear fission and fusion, natural and human-made. Most atoms on Earth, you see, are stable, non-radioactive ones. However, a very small number are what we call radioactive. That is, the nuclei of these atoms are unstable. They spontaneously break apart. In that breaking apart, they release radiation of four different kinds. These four kinds of nuclear-generated radiation are alpha particles, beta particles, gamma rays, and high-speed neutrons. Each of these four types of nuclear-generated radiation has its own dangers and its own potential for good. Alpha particles are comparatively large in size and travel at high speeds. An alpha particle is the same thing as a helium nucleus, two protons and two neutrons. It has a positive charge of two. Ordinarily, alpha particles cannot penetrate the skin. But if radioactive atoms that produce alpha particles are taken in through the mouth or lungs, they can then disintegrate in the lungs, stomach, bloodstream, or other organs, and can cause serious damage to body cells. Particularly dangerous are isotopes like iodine-131, which can accumulate in the thyroid gland. After many years of such exposure, cancer may result. Cesium-137 tends to accumulate in the liver, spleen, and the muscles. Barium-140 in the bones. Other radioactive atoms also have the potential to invade and harm the body from inside. Beta particles are much smaller. Beta particles are high-speed electrons that shoot out of a radioactively disintegrating nucleus. Being smaller, they are also more penetrating. Gamma rays also come from the decay of certain radioactive elements. Now, gamma rays, remember, are electromagnetic waves of very short wavelength and very high frequencies. And finally, in the special case of nuclear fission or fusion, whether in bombs or power plants, high-speed neutrons are emitted that can also cause ionizing destruction to atoms and cells. Like other kinds of radiation, they can also be useful in medical and industrial applications. Now that completes our list of kinds of radiation known today, with one exception, cosmic rays. Cosmic rays are mysterious particles that come from unknown sources in outer space and bombard our Earth continually. Our atmosphere shields us from these rays to some extent, as does Earth's magnetic field. We can't do much to escape these cosmic rays, and we get more radiation from them if we ride in an airplane, live at a high altitude, or spend much time at the North or South Pole. In all of these cases, we get less atmospheric or magnetic field shielding. If you had to rate the best and the worst of all these forms of radiation from our human point of view, it would be impossible. Like most things in life, forms of radiation have their good sides and their bad sides. Scientists who specialize in the study of ionizing radiation have invented ways of measuring the bad side, the potential of radiation for harming living tissues. The most widely used measure for this is called a REM, 
That's short for Ranchen equivalent in man. Since a rem is a rather large unit, measurements are usually expressed in millirems, that is, thousandths of a rem. Rems and millirems are measures of the amount of ionizing radiation, no matter what the source, that will produce a given amount of damage in living tissue. Now here, for instance, is a Geiger counter is counting natural background radiation. It's always been there and presumably always will, as well as the radiation from things like salt, ceramic plates. At the lowest level, everyone on Earth receives between 100 to 400 millirems of radiation a year from natural sources like cosmic rays, naturally radioactive atoms in the air, soil, water, rocks, building materials, and practically all food. Indeed, we get about 20 millirems a year from our own bodies, and we radiate some of that to our family and friends. But by far the most significant ionizing radiation exposure from natural sources is from the radioactive element radon. Radon is a decay product from naturally occurring uranium that is present in most rocks and soils. Uranium and radon occur naturally almost everywhere on Earth and have no relation to nuclear fallout from bombs or power plant emissions. Radon exposure, like any ionizing radiation, can lead to lung cancer. Well, the average radiation dose from radon in the United States and Canada is about 200 millirems a year. Some areas of the country and some homes may have significantly more than that, however. The EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, recommends that people test the amount of radon in their home using simple kits available from most hardware stores. If it is above what is considered a relatively safe level, there are various ways to ventilate rooms so that the level is decreased. Besides this natural radiation, everyone on Earth gets very small amounts of radiation due to fallout from past nuclear bomb tests and from nuclear power plant accidents. At present, this is much less than the natural background rate described here. People living closest to the nuclear accident at Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania, for instance, the total amount of additional radioactivity released in the near vicinity of the plant was about equal to one chest X-ray. The famous Chernobyl nuclear accident in the former Soviet Union, now a part of Ukraine, resulted in significantly higher background radiation for a few days or weeks in many parts of Europe. Outside the Soviet Union, these levels were still far below those considered safe by most radiation scientists. If you lived within 20 miles of Chernobyl, you would have been exposed to about 1,500 extra millirems the first year after the accident. This is roughly three times the safety standard for the general public, but less than a third the standard for radiation industry workers in the United States. By way of comparison, smoking one and a half packs of cigarettes a day exposes your lungs to 8,000 millirems a year. The most significant ionizing radiation exposure most people get in their lifetime is from medical and dental x-rays. One chest x-ray, for instance, gives about 17 millirems. A dental x-ray gives about 300 millirems. Neither of these, though, is given to the whole body, which means a great deal less potential damage. A total of five rems of whole body radiation a year is the government safety maximum for radiation industry workers. For the general public, the standard is lowered to one half a rem, that's 500 millirems a year. As exposures go higher than this, there is more significant risk but at present it is very difficult to estimate this accurately. We do know that over a thousand REMs at one time is almost always fatal. However, 1,000 REMs over a period of years would not be fatal. It might not even be harmful.
We know that over 100 rems a year to the whole body today is dangerous, however, and does increase the long-term risk of cancer. But we should not close as we did not open with the negative. With all the emphasis on risks and radiation, we may be in danger of forgetting the other sides, the positive sides. Not only are X-rays, gamma rays, alpha rays, beta rays, neutrons, and even cosmic rays potentially dangerous, you could also call all of them windows of opportunity. How so? Well, where would the living world be, for instance, if green plants had not opened up a few billion years ago to the windows of opportunity that visible light radiation presented to the world? The opportunity to invent photosynthesis, the opportunity to make food and energy available for themselves first and for animals later. And what about animals? Where would we be if eyes had not been invented to take advantage of the opportunity visible light radiation offered to see and to explore our world? So too, we have only begun to explore the opportunities that new kinds of ionizing radiation present to our world. Opportunities to understand our place in this radiant universe and to make a better place of our spaceship Earth home. And if you're ever tempted to forget these elementary facts, take a walk someday on the sunny side of the street.